Welcome to the Insightful Professor. In response to a video that I've had out on YouTube for quite a while in terms of how to install Oracle 18C Express Edition, I received a few comments from some viewers indicating that they've had some difficulty in getting the database system up and running. In particular, they've experienced a communication problem, a TNS protocol adapter error. So I decided to put together a brief video to explain the nature of that problem and what quite likely could be the cause of that and a proposed solution. So let's take a look at the nature of the problem and then how we might be able to resolve it. First, let's comment on the text of this error message. In general, a TNS error message pertains to the connection or communication between client and server through Oracle Net Services. So what is TNS? Well, TNS stands for Transparent Network Substrate. That was certainly a very useful piece of information. Well, for the most part, we really don't need to be concerned with this term. However, for those who are curious, TNS is a foundation technology built into the Oracle Net Foundation layer that works with any standard network transport protocol. If your curiosity has not been satisfied by that comment, perform a search on this topic. Now that raises the next question. What is a protocol? Well, a protocol is a set of rules that defines behavior. In the context of a computer network, these rules define how data will be transported. Now, the rules for communication, in terms of a general definition of protocol, say that they affect how people communicate. For example, the way you might communicate with a friend or greet a friend is likely going to be quite different than the way you might greet some dignitary. So the idea is that protocols would be a set of rules based upon certain circumstances. The idea of TNS and Oracle Net is it allows for support of many different network protocols. Now let's take a look at client server and how communication is accomplished here. First off, there are two processes that wish to communicate. We have the client process, and then we have the server process. Typically, the processes run on different machines, but it's possible they could run on the same machine. In any event, the concept of some kind of network communication between the client and the server has to be considered. The client-server configuration, we see two processes that wish to communicate. The client process is the front end running something like SQL+. Plus. And that's the process through which we then submit requests to the database system. The server process is on the back end, and it, this runs the database management system, which will respond to the user request. So the two processes can be deployed on separate machines, as indicated in our diagram here, or they could run on the same machine. And the idea of them running on the same machine is essentially what you have with the Oracle Express Edition that you've installed. Both processes run on the same machine. And this is why I'm referring to these as processes rather than the client machine and the server machine. So the next question is, where does Oracle Net come into play? Well, if we take a look at the Oracle documentation, we see that Oracle Net Services is an interface between the database and the network communication protocols that facilitate this distributed processing, both in terms of client talking to server or server talking to server distributed databases. So Oracle Net is a component of Oracle Net Services, and it establishes and maintains a network session from a client application to a database server. So what are the roles of the components in the system? In particular, there's a special component called the listener. And what is its purpose? Well, the listener is a server-side process. And as its name suggests, it listens for incoming client connection requests. So the 
listener selects an appropriate select. So a client application sends a connection request to the listener. For example, consider that you're using SQL Plus as a client application. When you start SQL Plus and supply a username and password, those credentials are then sent to the server for authentication as part of the connection request. The listener manages the traffic of such requests to the database, and assuming that the server is successfully contacted, the credentials will then be validated, and the client application will then be connected to the server and allowed to send appropriate requests for data services. So the client process then connects to a service handler that is initiated or established by the listener. Then, after the connection has been established, the listener's job has been done, and the client and the server handler communicate directly. Let's consider where we see this TNS protocol adapter error. Let's assume that we're attempting to connect to the database running SQL Plus on our client. So we enter our username and password. Then when we hit enter to proceed to the next step, we experience the problem. The TNS protocol adapter error message is returned and we have not successfully connected to the database. So this problem often results from something as simple as the database is simply not running. And it may not be running because the instance was not started because auto start was not activated in some way. Now, given that the installation video that I posted on YouTube demonstrated the installation of 18C Express Edition using Microsoft Windows, we'll address the problem using a Windows operating system. That is, I'll provide some example and demonstration of this using Windows. I'm going to be working with an old Windows 7 installation that I happen to have laying around in a virtual machine. So we'll, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Now, a common cause of the problem, as we said, is the database is unavailable. To understand this, in Windows, there are two services running, one for the database and one for the listener. We'll see that the listener service may be active, but the database service is where the problem arises. Let's take a look at a Windows utility called msconfig. I'll go to the Start menu, and from the Start menu, I can then type in the text box msconfig and run this application. If we select the Services tab, and then to avoid all of the clutter, hide the Microsoft services, what we'll see is the key services for third-party applications. So we see a few services for Oracle, but what's of interest to us here would be the listener service and the database service. And the database service is currently running, and it is checked, and the listener is running, and it's checked. We can disable services, we can enable services through this screen. So we'll come back to this tool in just a moment. Now let's go to SQL Plus and attempt our connection. So we'll log in as system with our password, and we have successfully connected. Now this being 18C, we have a pluggable database and a container database. We've actually logged into XE, which is our container database. If we wished to connect to the other database, our pluggable database, we could again provide the password or be prompted for it and we would put a host string that says xe pdb1 and now we're connected to the pluggable database in each case we're actually using the listener service in the second case we explicitly provided the value with a host string of xe pdb1 in the first case we did not provide the host string so what the system will do is it will use the Oracle SID that is part of the current environment. In a Windows system, this is stored in the Windows registry. So instead of saying, let's connect to XE, what we actually did was we kind of implied connecting to XE. Notice that we did not use the app XE 
But when we do, we're actually going into that database. So we can omit it, but we're still going in through the, the listener service. That's important to recognize here. Now, let's go ahead and get out of this for a moment. So we'll go into MS config, look at the services, reduce the clutter by looking at all non Microsoft services, go to the Oracle service XE, the database service, and uncheck it. We apply this and then click OK to leave. And what will happen is the system prompts us for a restart. So we'll let the system restart. And what we'll find is that when it does restart, we'll see that this Oracle service has not been started automatically. Now, with the system restarted, we can see that our attempt to connect to the Oracle database has failed, resulting in that exact error, the protocol adapter error. Let's exit SQL Plus and take a look at the MS Config utility and check the status. We'll go to our services and take a look at the Oracle service XE, the database service. Sure enough, it says stopped. It was not automatically started. Now, a way that we might be able to start a service would be to use the net command. Let's give that a try and see what the result is. We'll go to the command line and we'll attempt to do the startup with net start Oracle service XE. And when we give this a try, we get this nasty message, quite different than the one we saw through Oracle. With the Net Services facility, it says I can't start the service because it's either disabled or there's some other problem. So we can't reinitiate the process by going through this facility. So now let's go back and reset through the MS config the status for our service. And we'll take the Oracle Service XE, check it apply the change and then click OK and again it prompts us for a restart. Through this restart the service will automatically be restarted for us when the system resumes. So the system has successfully restarted and as you can see I run the MS config utility and it reveals that the Oracle service XE, the database service, did successfully start. So let's try to access the database through SQL plus. So system and my password and I have successfully entered the system. And one more time, this time we'll use an explicit host string and we'll connect to our PDB and sure enough we're fully operational. So what have we discussed in this video? Well, we covered a number of points. We discussed the general idea of how clients and servers communicate in a distributed environment, in particular in an Oracle database system. We identified two processes that actually run on a Windows system. And these processes were discussed as the listener process and the database process. We then explain the role of the listener, as it's often referred to. Again, this will often reside on the server and execute there, listening for communication requests from clients. We then finally got down to discussing the ORA 12560 error, the protocol adapter error. We explained a common cause for this, being that of the two services the listener may be running, but the database process was not started. So we suggested a solution to this error using a couple utilities that are available on the Windows operating system. We mentioned the net command network management facility, and we said, well, this may not work if it's the case where the server process for the database has actually been disabled. 
So we use the msconfig command and examine the status of our processes. And we could determine whether the server process was enabled or disabled. And if it was in either state, we could reverse the state, either disable it or enable it. Recall that that required a system restart to take effect. But when we enabled it upon system restart, the process automatically started our database and we were able to successfully connect. So I hope that this information has been useful and informative to you and that this addresses the problems that you may be experiencing with the protocol adapter error. So let, let us know if this has been helpful by offering some comments and perhaps consider subscribing to the channel to get postings or information about future postings. And once again, thanks for watching.